everyone, it's Angelica Allen here. I am a stage three biocancer survivor and a quantum health coach. And I help my clients to take charge of their health and their life by changing their physical and emotional habits. So they can create peak performance and emotional mastery. And today I'm gonna to be talking about how you can take your power back. This was a very important part of my healing journey. As when you were diagnosed with cancer, you were really left feeling quite powerless. You suddenly become dependent on medication, going to doctors, and you go into this conveyor belt as, you know, from one thing to another, one treatment to another, surgeries, hospital visits, doctor visits, and you feel like there isn't much you can do. And once I started realizing that that was going to be my reality for, you know, the 12 sessions of chemotherapy, which, you know, they couldn't really give me a, a, a date uh, or, or a length of time, you know, it was planned to, to happen every two weeks, but you know, if there was any delays, you know, I would have to wait for another week to receive the, the next chemotherapy session. So I realized that, you know, I couldn't stay in that place or feeling so powerless. I needed to do something. But what's, what I also started realizing is that I had been living, feeling powerless for quite a long time. I was 38 years old, I was married, happily married with two kids, and I was working corporate, and I had created a life that I kind of thought that would make me happy. You know, I, I would say my parents always wanted me to get a good job in a large company and have a good salary and have a house and have no debt and be happily married and have children. And that's exactly what I was doing. But I had also stopped pushing myself to growing. I had also stopped uh, doing anything that I loved, uh, dreaming, wanting more. And I kind of thought to myself, it, and I had been thinking about to myself previous to my diagnosis, is this, is this it? You know, is this all there is to life? And part of me felt, well, maybe this is a midlife crisis. But the truth is, is I had been feeling powerless for a very long time and the cancer diagnosis would just highlight it, how powerless I have let myself to be and to become. So once I realized that I needed to take my power back, I started focusing on what I could control. Yes, I needed to go to the doctors, I needed to go to hospital, I needed to have my chemotherapy a treatment, but what could I do to change? So that's when I started changing my physical and my emotional habits. And in that process, I needed to accept my reality as it was, without any sugar coating anymore, without kind of having this fog around my face and not really facing my fears. I hadn't been very healthy. I hadn't been living a healthy life, eating healthy. I had been addicted to stress, to anger. I hadn't been sleeping well. There were so many things I needed to change if I wanted to get well. You know, there were so many choices that I made that led me to that diagnosis. And all of a sudden I thought, you know, I can make different choices from this point on. It doesn't matter that I'm so sick. It doesn't matter that I have cancer. It doesn't matter that I have to go for chemotherapy. There is always something I can do. I can always make a different choice. You know, one of the most powerful books I've read is A Man Searching for Meaning, which was written by Frank Victor while he was in a concentration, well, after he was um, had experienced being in, in a concentration camp in the Second World War. And he talks about that, you know, the, the people who survived were not the strongest physically, but the ones that were the strongest mentally, that they could focus on, on the smallest things that they could keep themselves on track mentally because physically their bodies were going through hell and back. You know, and for me it was very important to, to really accept my reality as it was. Yes, I was very sick. Yes, there was a lot of things that I needed to change. But I do have the free will. I can make different choices from this point on. And after I started making those small changes physically and emotionally, I started 
taking my power back, feeling more empowered, feeling that, you know, yes, there is so much I can do. Yeah, there is a different life out there for me. Yes, I can create whatever I want. I don't have to be the prisoner of my past. And that's when, where my third point comes into. I really stop blaming and giving my power away to other people who had hurt me in the past. And I went into deeply into myself and faced my deepest fears. The things that I had put in little boxes and I thought they're just gonna go away by itself. When in actual fact, they only created a cancer inside me. And I thought to myself, I need to face those now. I need to take responsibility of those. I need to change how I feel about this. It's not about anybody else. It's not about the past. It's not about, you know, feeling like a victim and I'm, I was hard done by and I went through all of the th those things. I need to take responsibility from this point on and change my my choices around everything that has ever happened to me so facing our fears when we're taking our power back is very important the more we ignore the more we suppress the more we try to hide away from our fears the big the, the fear gets bigger and bigger and bigger inside us and before we know that fear has a hold on us we can barely think about it just to think about it we can barely breathe this was me and I needed to do that if I wanted to take my power back, if I wanted to live in this body again, if I wanted to feel and connect to who I really was again. Because all the time that you are spending your, wasting your energy trying to keep that fear in a box, trying to hide away from that fear, you are left with very little energy for yourself to create the life that you want. So being true to yourself in that journey is really important. And the last point when it came to taking my power back was really choosing my words and how I spoke to myself and how I spoke about my story and how I spoke about my feelings my emotions you know I no longer allowed my thoughts to constantly tell myself I wasn't enough that I didn't do enough that I needed to do more which is something that I had struggled with my whole life I started celebrating everything that I did. I connected to loving myself for real. I connected to the to the all of the beautiful things that I had done in my life. So to take your power back, it's important to understand and acknowledge and remind yourself that you have a free will and you can make different choices every single day, in every moment of your life accept your reality as it is and stop sugarcoating facing your fears and stop hiding away from your fears and be impeccable with your words how you speak to yourself the relationship with your emotions and in your feelings look after your inner world like you would look after a garden like a child a, a baby or your dog your pet Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And if you are in that place where you want to take control of your life, take control back, there is a Black Friday bundle that you can get access to for 147 US dollars. Get access to three of my courses, Life Changing, which focus on changing your habits to change your life, changing your physical and emotional habits to finding forgiveness so you can let go of the past and all of the energy that you've been wasting on holding on to things that don't serve you anymore and really connecting to finding self-love and cultivating self-love for real so you can start creating a life for you instead of a life for others thank you so much for uh, for watching and i'll see you on the next one take care